presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. No games this week, so we caught up with two superstar guards, Marcelinho Huertas, the leader of FC Barcelona, and Curtis Jurels, the new face of EA7 Milan. While Pop Spencer Bonsu and Richard Hendricks are two tough centres. And we also meet one of the greatest shooters ever, David Blue. Plus, we bring you the B-Win MVP of the month. Let's get to know a superstar of one of the favourites to reach the final four. Marcelinho Huertas has been a guard of FC Barcelona since 2011, and this is his sixth season in the Euroleague. Last year, he led the competition in free throw shooting percentage 97.22. This season, he was the MVP for round two of the top 16. Today, he is 30. He has lots of experience and a great vision of the game that allow him to take responsibility in the key moments of the match. I'm a player that can see like the court pretty pretty well and you know try try to find my, my friends open, my teammates open in the on court and uh, difficult moments I like to have the ball in my hands to make decisions. I'm a player that uh, would do anything to win. There is still room for improvement. A great motivation is represented by the challenge with some serious athletes. Defensively, I'm not a great player, but uh, I'm trying still to improve on that. It's not about like having like a, a great body or anything, it's just uh, will. We play against so many like talented players and sometimes you have to guard them. This is like one of the biggest motivations I have. Next to these great players, there are two champions that dominated the scene over the last few years. So many players that uh, can play at like a level that when they're they're hot, it's like they're almost like unstoppable. And I'd say like Spanulis is one of them. Uh, one guy that like also I admire a lot and respect the way he plays. Not only maybe he's not like a like a true scorer, but the way he. He manages the team on court and the way he defends, the way he plays for the team, the way he controls everything, it's uh, Diamantidis. Marcelinho is a citizen of the world, a Brazilian who also has Italian citizenship and part of his family is of Spanish origin, a mix that leaves its mark. I grew up in Brazil, just like live in tents, like I like to enjoy every moment of my life, so I, I think this is like the Brazilian part. I have like also like Spanish family, so with my mom say we are like stubborn, and you say this is from the part of the Spanish lie. <laughs> my dad said that like we whenever like somebody speak loud, they say okay, this is like part from the Italian family. For a young Paulista living in Barcelona, is the opportunity to follow one of the strongest teams in the world in one of the most fascinating stadiums. For me, soccer is a, it's a great hobby. Being Brazilian is just like a part of me. Having the chance and opportunity to go here at Camp Nou to watch all the games, it's just like something incredible. And as written in the stands of the Camp Nou, Barcelona is more than just a club. Barcelona as a basketball team is like the best of the best. You can find like, you know, like the best in every, every little thing you need. So it's like a different world. Taking care of like, you know, like sick kids, you know, like with the players going to visit and giving like gifts in like special days like Christmas, or always like uh, people visiting schools to help children uh, to study or just like to teach them uh, how to succeed in life and small things like this. When you are a part of this organization, you can really say, okay, now I understand why people talk, you know, Barcelona is more than just a club. When you play for FC Barcelona, the goal is always to win. With a 5-0 record in the top 16, Barca and Marcelinho are already looking to the playoffs. There are so many teams that can go to the Final Four right now, and uh, it's going to be really tough to, to get there, you know. I, I just wish we, we can make it again this time. We can go to Milan, and uh, but I think the, the playoffs are going to be really interesting. Curtis Jarrells is one of the leaders of EA7 Emporio Armani Milan. During this top 16, he was a standout performer in leading the Italian team to victory, 
in particular against Olympiakos Piraeus and Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul. This is his fourth season in Euroleague, following periods with Partizan Belgrade, Fenerbahce Ulker and Besiktas Istanbul, and initially he had some unexpected difficulties in his adventure. When I first came to Europe, I thought it would be easy. And I'm at Partizan and we play in the Euroleague and you know, we get beat by 20 points. And so then I'm like, hey, you know, it's competitive over here. You know, these guys can play basketball. 27. His birthday was on February the 5th. Curtis is at the peak of his sporting and athletic ability, and he is fully aware of what his strengths are. The best part of my game is, you know, being able to not only be a point guard, but also being able to score the basketball. Uh, I've been adjusting my game as far as to what my team needs, and I think that you can't really teach somebody to score the basketball. It's a natural instinct. And I think that I have that in my back pocket at all times. He scores lots of points, but he also has the ability to be decisive at both ends of the court. I'm a pretty good defender, you know, on-ball defender. You're more concentrated when the ball is in front of you and you know you have to, you can't let this guy go around you. And I mean, off the ball, you know, sometimes I could maybe lose a little focus and relax and things like that. But I think just naturally, um, you have to pay more attention when, you're, when your man has the ball. The offensive play of the Texan guard has evolved over the years, making him a better all-rounder and more unpredictable. Over the course of my career, you know, if you look at the percentages, I was better, you know, shooting off the dribble. So now when I'm in the summertime, when I'm working on my game and I do a lot of catches and shooting, and, I mean, and now I'm making more catch and shoot shots, you know, than I ever made. I used to like to dribble with my right, and everybody knew, hey, when he dribbles with his right, he's going to shoot. At one point, I had one of my coaches tell me, yeah, it's easy. When you go left, you go all the way to the basket. And when you go right, you stop to pull up to shoot. And I was like, hey, you know what? You, you, you're right. But now, you know, I like to have it in my left hand. You know, I don't know why, but it just, it just happened. Curtis has shared the court with many stars in Europe, but there is one that was born with him. Bogdan Bogdanovich, you know, I played with him at, uh, in, in Partizan. He didn't play much when I was there. I'm talking to him, and he's like, man, you know, in, in a couple years, watch, I'm, I'm going to be playing. I'm going to be, you know what I mean? I, I enjoyed to see that because he said he was going to do it, and now look at him. I text him now, and I'm like, hey, man, because we play one-on-one, -on -one, that's why you're good, man, because I used to kick your butt every day. It may be a coincidence or not, but EA7 Emporio Armani Milan was somehow in his destiny. It's crazy. When I was my first year out of college, I went to the store, you know, the Armani Exchange store, and like I used to get all this Armani stuff, man. And some of my teammates from the D-League, they are like, we call you Mr. Armani, man. I think it's great that he comes to the games. Sometimes I check to see if he's here, and when he's not, I'm like, damn. Today, the team has the right chemistry, both on and off the court. We're pretty much all around the same age, and we like the same things, and so um, it makes it that much easier, and I think it's making us you know, a better team on the court. We've been doing a good job of you know, winning, and not only winning, but winning in a, in a certain way. With a standout leader. I would say CJ. He's one of the guys. He'll call us up and get us together. He think he's the leader, so I was, I'm going to say that. <laughs> Making it to the final stage of the competition will not be easy, but Curtis Jarrells can also count on the support of the Stars and Stripes. People in the state, you know, in the city, they follow me, so, you know, everybody wants to know, where can we watch you, where can we watch you? And I, I direct them, I say, yeah, go to, you know, NewYorkLeague.com, and they're like, oh, we got to pay, we got to pay to see the games. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, man, you know, you want to watch? You got to pay a few dollars a month, but I mean, you know, it's the best quality. Seska <laughs> Moscow center Nenad Kerstich has been named the B-Win MVP for the month of January. 
The Russian team won four of their first five top 16 games, two of them on the road in Krasnodar and Munich, and Nenad was the top performer, not only among his teammates, but both overall and per minute. The two-time All-Euroleague centre always scored in double digits, averaging more than 16 points per game, reaching his best in the only defeat on the buzzer in Belgrade against Partizan with 27 points. Nenad's season also stands out for the 18 points he managed in the massive game against Real Madrid. In addition to his skill in scoring, the Serbian centre has great ability under the boards, with an average of six rebounds in the top 16 that has contributed to an average index rating of 21.6 in 27 minutes per game. No other player has been able to match that in the month of January in so few minutes. What are the qualities that define a fighter? One example is being just 2.03 metres tall and playing top-level basketball as a centre for many seasons. In other words, these are the qualities of Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar's Richard Hendricks. Richard from Decatur, Illinois, is now leading his team to another exciting season after the Euro Cup title and final MVP award last year at an even higher level, and he is convinced they can succeed. Have a, a lot of different guys who have high character and with that character they're able to um, have their leadership show. Maybe one day it might be myself, other days it's you know Montes Calnietas, Derek Brown. Every single day it's a different person. I think we have a lot of winners in the locker room and uh, we're trying to do something special here with Loco. Among them one particularly impressed Richard. Sergey Bikov. Through those first so many games of the season, he's been a, a rock for us. You know, um, his leadership, uh, his abilities on on the court, uh, he's definitely impressed me. The first step is always the most important when embarking on a long journey. Exactly what Richard and his teammates did last October when they faced Kervena Zvezda in their first ever Euroleague game. You know, to, to go on the road to a hostile environment in Belgrade and uh, play a good strong game and uh, be a force inside for our team, I think uh, was a statement, uh, not just for me, but for our entire team. And to get a, a tough road win, to give ourselves some momentum in the group uh, was huge. Having the right players is not enough in order to win. You also need someone to lead them. The compliments that I would give with, with Coach Pershuden, he's always a fighter. Uh, you know, I really like his personality for the fact that he's always going to be prepared for the game and uh, wants to win every single match that we come out. I do think that that leadership that he portrays is contagious within the locker room. In 14 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague games, Richard averaged more than 10 points and 7 rebounds per game, playing a little more than 23 minutes. Impressive numbers that are allowing the team to fight for their dream, the playoffs. It would be a special gift for their special supporters. Uh, I have a lot of respect for them. They're very, very loyal. They come to cheer us on wherever we are. Uh, they stay up late with the time difference and watch the games uh, in Russia while we're gone in different countries in Western Europe or whatnot. So um, I definitely think that the uh, locomotive Cuban fan base is just a, a wonderful fan base and I'll continue to fight as hard as I can, not just for the team, but what for them. is the regular starting center for Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul. He is 
20 years old. He was born in England, but is of African origins, and he has the most curious name of all the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. My full name is uh, Nana Papaya Dueni Mensabansu. My first name actually means royalty in Ghana. My middle name, which is Yao, Papa Yao, where everybody gets the pops from, is um, in Ghana. Whatever day you were born, every child inherits the name of that day. And my, I was born on Thursday, so I got the Papa Yao. Mensa Bansu, it means third son in whale. It's the name that was given to my family because an ancestor of mine uh, supposedly killed a whale. People like to play with that a lot, but yeah, that's how I got my name. As well as having Ghanaian roots, both his parents were Protestant ministers, instilling in Pops a deep religious belief. I grew up, you know, in the church, and you know, I called my mom and dad to pray with them before every game. And, you know, right before the game starts, I, you know, I like to, to go somewhere private on the court, and, you know, I put my jersey over my head. You know, I say a quick prayer, and I just try to calm myself down of any nerves that I have. As well as his faith in God, there was also often room for some unusual rituals on the court. I used to be very superstitious to the point where one, I used to chew gum before a game, and one game I, you know, put the gum, the packet of gum, one of the piece in my sock to remember to put to eat it, but I never did. I played the game, I had a great game, and then I realized after the game the gum was still in my sock. So the next game, I put another piece of gum there, so... However, this superstition faded as time went by. A couple years ago, we travelled to the Czech Republic, I think, to play a Euro Challenge game, and they lost our bags, so we had nothing. I have a pair of shorts that um, the person who taught me how to play the game, he passed away a few years ago, and the last pair of shorts he saw me wear I wear those under every every game, every uniform I play in. But those shorts were with our uniforms and they lost out. And, you know, I was kind of panicking. I was like, how am I going to play? I've played every game with these shorts. And something just told me that, you know, I got, have to get rid of these superstitious things. I have to just play. So now I'll just do things differently just to show to myself that I'm not superstitious. So, you know, some games I'll go out and shoot at a certain time, then the next game I won't shoot just to see if, you know, if anything is different. And usually it's not. It's all within the mind. You know, basketball is 80% mental. Being born in a country where everyone loves soccer and basketball is not too popular, and also having started playing a long way from home, are all things that have shaped his character. Being born in London, in a country that, you know, basketball is fairly unknown, and then moving to the United States just to go to school. And I didn't start playing until I was uh, 14, 15. So, you know, I've always, always had to adapt quickly and always had to work a little harder to keep up with everybody else because of my late start. The adaptation for me is something that is second nature. Despite his numerous commitments as a player, Pops has completed his studies, something he hopes will help him in the future away from basketball. I took a class my first year in school and I just loved psychology and I loved everything about it. And I felt like what it did for me was I could use in my everyday life, on the court, off the court. I remember I had a course about neuropsychology, which is psychology of the brain. And it was really probably one of the hardest classes I've ever had to do. Now I've got my degree in psychology. So, you know, something I can always be proud of. And who knows, maybe one day Pops will use his experience and his degree helping kids in Africa that have not been as lucky as he has. It saddened me to see somebody who had potential, you know, not be able to use it. And I saw myself in a lot of these kids, you know, I saw kids at the age of, you know, 15, 16, at six foot seven, but they've never really had the, the experience or the teaching to learn from the game. They've never really had basketball shoot. So I made it my goal to try and help these kids as much as possible. And, you know, I really feel like um, the future is in Africa. You know, it's a huge continent, there's talent everywhere.
in Ghana, in Europe or elsewhere, on the court or off it. Pops's motto is always a positive one. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. The 2004 EuroLeague champion with Maccabi Tel Aviv, forward David Blue decided to take a year off at the end of the 2011-12 season. But after rediscovering what motivates him and the understanding of what the game means for him, he was back again with the Yellows this year. Being away from the game for a year made me appreciate it that much more and uh, made me realize how much I, I love to play basketball. And uh, it gave me a little bit more of enthusiasm uh, to come back and play and to be a part of something so special. His return to the game was not easy, but he kept working during the off season and just needed to pick up his confidence again. I tried to stay in good shape uh, last year when I didn't play. Uh, I tried to play as much as I could and continue to shoot and, and stay active. Probably the most difficult part for me to come back was adjusting to the rigors of everyday training and some of the aches and pains that you endure in the beginning of the season and mid-season. And uh, it probably took me a few months before I was feeling uh, completely healthy and, and in good shape. He also has a message to send all basketball players around the world both pros and amateurs, to show how much he loves the game. I would just say to all basketball players, uh, really appreciate the game. Um, for professionals, appreciate what you're doing as a job, um, because there's really no, no other job like it. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a game in the end, but it's a, it's a great game. Who is playing his seventh campaign with Maccabi, and he's currently the man that has played the longest with the team. He knows what it means to be there. It's an honor for me to be a part of such a storied organization. Uh, it means a lot to me to live in Israel, and uh, you know the fans and everybody around the team has just been very supportive, and it continues to be that way year after year with Maccabi. The long-distance shot is David's trademark. He has scored 249 three-pointers in 166 EuroLeague games with four different teams. Maccabi Tel Aviv, Benetton Treviso, Fortitudo Bologna and Le Mans with an excellent 40.6%. And he looks excited just talking about it. When you catch fire, it feels like any shot you throw up, uh, you'll make it and uh, it really comes down to a lot of hard work and um, you know, uh, believing in yourself uh, through that hard work. So for me, it's, uh, it's a great feeling when, when I can hit two or three in a row and uh, you, know, you just want to keep it going. He's also not afraid to take responsibility in the clutch moments or to win a game as he did in the 2010-11 regular season on the court of BC Himki Moscow region. First of all, you have to want to take the shot. And uh, if you want to take the shot, then it comes down to how much practice you've put in. And then from there, it's all about uh, calming yourself and understanding the, the situation and trying to just block everything out and, uh, you know, don't think too much. The big game of next week takes place at the Ulker Sports Arena of Istanbul in what is a crucial challenge for the future of both Fenerbahce Ulker and Laboral Kucha Vitoria. Both sides have won just once so far in the top 16 and need a win to fuel their hopes of advancing to the quarter-finals. Two masters of the game will also face off on the bench. Zelimir Obradovic, eight-time EuroLeague winner for the home team, and Sergio Scariolo, two-time European champion with the Spanish national team. The game will also be a clash between two of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague top scorers, Linas Kleiser and Andres Nocioni. and creativity of point guards Bo McCaleb and Walter Hodge. And the 
scoring ability of Bohan Bogdanovic and Fernando Sanemeterio. The last meeting between the two teams was in the 2012-13 top 16 when Laboral won both 75-97 in Istanbul and 87-67 at home with Thibaut Place and Andres Nocioni as best scorers. Don't miss Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul versus Laboral Kucha Vitoria next Thursday night in our Game of the Week. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.